Hi all you Band in a Box users, I'm here to bring you a tutorial on using an audio interface with Band in a Box. Just a quick word before we start, the contents of this tutorial may also work for USB microphones, but we tend to recommend avoiding those as a good audio interface provides more flexibility and better software and driver stability than most USB microphones. So first off, what is an audio interface? I'm glad you asked. An audio interface is an electronic device that converts audio signals into data that your computer can use and vice versa. In most cases, this will be converting your analog audio from a microphone or instrument into digital audio, as well as converting the digital audio from your computer into analog. Basically, it's an external sound card. Now you may be thinking, my computer has a sound card built in, why can't I just use that? Well, many integrated sound cards don't even have an input at all, and even when they do, built-in sound cards don't have the correct type of inputs for guitars or musician-level microphones. This is less to do with the physical plug and more to do with the electronics. If you were to adapt the plug on a guitar to connect to the microphone plug on your computer, it would likely sound pretty bad. Now, a typical audio interface looks something like this Focusrite interface I have here, but there are many other types available, big and small. For using with Band in a Box, we recommend a two-channel audio interface as that gives you the option of recording both mono and stereo sources. However, if you want to do some larger scale recording using real band or power tracks, you could buy an interface with more inputs. For example, recording drums can easily use four or more microphones. Beyond that, I'm not going to make any specific audio interface recommendations since the world of computer audio is constantly changing and I really don't want to have to do a new video every couple months. And most audio interfaces will work fine with Band of the Box anyways. However, we do recommend only buying an interface that comes with its own audio drivers, not with generic drivers like ASIO for all. Typically, we suggest sticking with the larger name brands you'll see in your local music store like Focusrite, Steinberg, that sort of thing, and avoid the bargain basement stuff you might see online. As every audio interface is different, we recommend following the manual that comes with it to get it connected to your computer. In the case of this Focusrite, I really only had to connect it to USB and it automatically installed the drivers for me. Now once the interface is connected and working with your computer, we can get it set up in Band in a Box. You'll want to go to the main audio preferences in Band in a Box, which is in the Options menu, under Preferences, then audio. First, you'll want to select an audio driver type. Typically, when recording, you should use ASIO, which stands for Audio Stream Input Output, or WAS, which stands for Windows Audio Session. The third option here, MME, should only be used as a last resort, as it typically creates a high amount of latency. This is the amount of time it takes for the interface and your computer to process the sound coming out of your instrument, as well as the audio being played back and it can cause a delay in your recording. Once you select the audio driver type, another window will pop up asking you to select an audio device. Make sure to select the one that corresponds to your hardware. In my case, it's the Focusrite one. If you have an interface with more than two input and output channels, you should select which channels you're using in the lower section here. In my case, the interface is two in and two out, so the defaults will work fine. Now, a quick note about ASIO. In many cases, ASIO drivers run in an exclusive mode. This means that only one program can use a sound card at a time. If you have any trouble using Band in a Box with ASIO, just make sure that you're only running one audio program at a time. This can even include your browser, so just save those cute cat videos for later. I know you love them, I do too. For this reason, we typically recommend only using ASIO when recording and use WAS or MME the rest of the time, since the latency really only affects recordings. While we're here, if you click on the ASIO Drivers Control Panel button, the control panel for your interface will come up. This is different for each device, but typically there will be a control for buffer size. This is a very important control as it can determine the amount of latency while recording. Lower numbers here provide lower latency, but will also increase the likelihood of audio glitches as the audio buffer is meant to prevent that. This is something that you should really play with to find the best results for your computer and interface. For me, the default was set to 192 and that seems to work quite well on this computer. Either way, once you've selected your device, click OK back to the main screen of Band in the Box and press play to make sure you can hear it. Remember, when using an audio interface, the sound will be coming out of whatever's connected to the interface, not the speakers built into your computer. 
We suggest a good pair of headphones whenever possible to avoid your microphone picking up any connected speakers. Now the main purpose here is to record something into Band in the Box. This could be your guitar, a keyboard, or even your voice. Start by plugging your instrument or microphone into the interface and click on the record button in Band in the Box. This will bring up the record audio window as well as a set of level meters. Now we're going to leave this for a moment and go back to your interface itself. Now there are some common controls that you'll find on most interfaces. You'll typically have input and output level controls. Plus many interfaces have controls for direct monitoring, phantom power, input type, pad or other functions. I'll be sticking with the basics for this video, so if your interface has controls I don't mention, you should consult the instruction manual for your interface. Now since we have these VU meters showing on our screen, we should start by setting up our input level. To do this, we're going to adjust the gain control on the interface while doing whatever it is we'll be recording. In this case, I'll use my guitar. You'll want to keep the peak level well below where it says clip here. Generally, I suggest keeping the peaks in the green zone, but if a loud part pushes into the yellow, that's okay too. If you're recording from a stereo source, you need to adjust the gain on input 2 as well. Now we can simply hit record and lay down some sweet sound. And that's it, it's that easy to record yourself into Band in a Box. So now that you've mastered the basics of recording into Band in a Box, I can show you a few tips and tricks and a little bit of troubleshooting. So first off, you might be wondering why you're not getting any sound. So the obvious things to check would be to make sure your cable and microphone are connected properly, and try a different cable if you have one. Make sure your interface is getting a signal. On most of them there are lights that show you when a signal is being received. Now one thing you may not know is that some microphones require power. Typically these are condenser microphones, and they usually require you to turn on phantom power from your interface. On this focus right, it's the 48 volts button. Now something to be careful about here is that most microphones will either use or ignore phantom power, but some can actually be damaged by it. So if you're not sure, you should consult with the manufacturer of the microphone to make sure that it is one that will accept or at least ignore phantom power. Now, if your interface is getting a signal, but it's not getting into band and box, you should revisit the earlier part of the video where I showed you how to select your audio interface in band and a box. If you're still stuck at this point, feel free to contact one of our tech support agents who would be happy to help. Now next up, many of you may be wondering why your recording is only coming in on the left or right side instead of in stereo. Well this is most likely because you're recording a mono signal onto a stereo track. If you're using a single microphone to record, or if you're plugging a guitar directly into your interface, that is a mono signal. Now it's perfectly fine to record in mono, in fact we do it all the time in the studio, and it's actually more common to record a mono source than stereo. The easy way to figure out whether an instrument should be recorded in mono or in stereo is to think of what part of the instrument produces sound. Let's look at a few examples. Take a piano. Sound is produced by each string, which are laid out across a wide area, meaning that if you put a microphone at one end, it will pick up different sound than a microphone at the other end. Piano would definitely benefit from stereo recording. Drums are much the same. The drums and cymbals are laid out across a wide area, meaning that these two would benefit from stereo recording. The idea here is that these instruments have multiple points that produce sound. Now that's fine if you have a piano or a drum set, but what if you're just recording your voice? Your mouth is a single sound source, meaning that it will not benefit from stereo recording. Wind instruments in general are the same, as are most stringed instruments. Generally speaking, you will need to connect something to two inputs on your audio interface to record in stereo, and only one input if you're recording mono. 
Now that we know whether we need to record in mono or stereo, let me show you how to control that in Band of the Box. To do that, open the Options menu, go to Preferences, then Audio, and you'll see two controls here. Audio track type for this song, which we should set to mono, and preferred default track type for new songs, which is currently set to stereo. If you know you're gonna be recording mono more often than stereo, say if you're primarily recording vocals or guitar, you should switch the preferred default track type for new songs to mono as well. Changing these options to mono means that anything you record from a single microphone or a direct guitar will come out of both speakers. Now, mono means that the exact same sound is coming out of both left and right speakers. Let's say you have a mono instrument or microphone, but you want the sounds to be different on the left and right. There are a couple ways to do this, but by far the easiest way is to just record your performance twice, then pan one to the left and one to the right. This is what we call double tracking and is very common in professional studios. To do this in Band of the Box, simply record once onto a utility track, then record again onto a second utility track. Once you've finished recording, use the pan control on the mixer to pan one to the left and one to the right. This works especially well for guitars, but can also work well for vocals and synthesizers. It doesn't work well on everything, particularly bass instruments, but I encourage you to experiment and see what you like. Now another thing that might be troubling you, what if you want to hear your recording while you're recording it? Say if you're using headphones and you want to be able to hear your vocals in the mix. Well, that's pretty simple to fix as well. Most interfaces these days have a direct monitor function which routes the incoming audio straight to your headphones or speakers. In the case of this Focusrite, simply push the direct monitor button on the front. Other interfaces may have a knob instead of a button, might have this controlled through a screen on the front of the unit, or through software. I suggest consulting your manual to make sure. Now next up, what if you can't hear your instrument in the mix no matter how loud you make it? This is easily solved by adding plugins to your track to process it. Typically this is done using equalization, which lets you boost or reduce certain frequencies in your sound, or with dynamics compression, which amplifies the quiet parts and reduces the loud parts. We include both of these types of plugins with Band in a Box for Windows, which you can easily add using the Plugins tab on the mixer. Just click where it says None and select Choose Plugin. I'm going to add the PG Dynamics plugin. In this case, I only want the compressor, so I will disable the expander and gate. The five knobs at the bottom here are what control the compressor. The threshold and ratio knobs will control how hard the compressor works, the attack knob controls how quickly the compressor responds, and the release knob controls how quickly the compressor lets go. Every instrument is different, so you'll have to play with these to get the sound that you like. But in general, you should adjust the threshold so that you get about six decibels of gain reduction, and then adjust the output gain to an appropriate level. The auto gain will automatically try to get it right, but if you want to control it yourself, simply uncheck that box and use the output gain knob. Now equalizing, or EQ, is also included. We have a 5-band EQ and a 10-band EQ. The only difference is the amount of sliders that you get to control, so just choose whichever one you're more comfortable with. Simply add one of these EQs to your track, and you can boost or cut the frequencies to make your recording stand out. Now my last tip here, when you're recording, make sure to turn off your cell phone, disconnect from the internet, and turn off anything nearby that's making noise. Your, your fan, air conditioning, your fridge, things like that. Your microphone will pick up anything and everything in the room, and it's much easier to edit noise out of your recording when it's not there in the first place. Plus, you don't want your phone ringing just when you're getting the perfect take. Cell phones in particular can also create some nasty electrical interference that might get picked up by the cables. Although, if you're making some industrial music, you might be into that. No judgment. And here we are, we've reached the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around with me. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button or leave us a comment, and consider subscribing to our channel for more great videos like this one. Now, get out there and record yourself, 
And above all, have fun.